Okay, so we're gonna take this model that we previously built, the social tobacco use model. Um, we had built in an earlier session of this boot camp um, and actually built it up over several sessions. Um, located there on the um, uh, on the uh, drive. And we're going to add a couple of features to it. The first feature we're going to add is an extraordinarily common one. And one that makes all the world of sense to include in this model. In fact, it's kind of shocking that it wasn't there. Um, I kind of created a, a little parameter for it um, um, just a moment ago called age. But really that just segues to how are we going to keep track of age? There's basically two broad models for keeping track of age. Mm. I guess I'll say three thinking broadly. The first thing is you can have an age parameter and just treat it as static. If your model is focused on a very short period of time, um, maybe this is a fully adequate thing for you to treat, treat age as for each person, you assign them an age and they retain that age. And indeed, one of our first models, we had exactly that. Um, and that sometimes is okay, but for many models, we're interested in a life course perspective or a, a perspective where we track people's age and age is an important risk factor and age you know, changes over time. And we're simulating things in the time scale of months or years and, and age matters. Babies are born unvaccinated or, you know, and, and immunologically um, uh, vulnerable. And we have, you know, people growing older and being subject to, to you know, uh, a growing number of chronic conditions. And, and we have vulnerable teenage years or adolescent years where, where um, we, we have, you know, a set of of, of special needs associated with them, et cetera. The developmental challenges and early life insults can occur at periods of great sensitivity in ways that shape people's trajectory later. So how are we gonna capture age is a key question. If it's not static, how are we going to capture? And there's two basic modes. Mode one, you have an initial age, and after that, for each agent, you increment it. Over time, each agent is keeping keep track of their age as an element of state. And over time, you add one to it. Every year, they have a birthday and they add one to their age. Easily done. Um, readily possible. It involves a fair bit of events once you're dealing with a large population, but it is possible. Um, so, I'll show a mode to do that, okay? So I'm gonna here have, and, and again, you can choose a couple of things. I'll show an initial age, okay? There'll be a parameter initial age or age initial, maybe I'll call it age initial. You can do it this way. Um, and then I will have a, when this agent is created, I will have a variable. And, oh, by the way, both of these should be integers. Uh, so I'm gonna have an age initial, which is an integer. And it's gonna have a default value of minus one. So I know if I didn't set it, by the way, I'm gonna save this as version eight. And I'm actually not gonna stick with this. This will not be my primary one, but I wanna show you this. This is very common. You have an integer age for people and you increment it. Initial age, now I'm gonna have a variable that's age or current age, mm. and it's gonna be an integer. And its initial value is going to be as given by the parameter. But I'm teaching you a lesson here that it transcends this. What's the tempting thing to do here? Say this variable for its Starting age, what does it use? The value of what? Well, it could use zero, but we're actually providing a parameter called initial age, right? We want them to start at this age, age initial. So what is it tempting to do? 
well, okay, it's getting, getting some good ideas, but we'll come back to that. It's a little bit ahead of where we are. So look, if, if they have an age, and this age is going to increment over time, where does it start at? Age initial. So we'd like to kind of be able to say age initial, but there's a problem. What is the problem? Well, no, I mean, it's negative one. That's the default value of it. That's the value if nothing is given to it. But we'll give something to the age initial. Imagine that it's given a value. It turns out that, at least this is my distinct recollection, and, and Wade could contradict me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, this variable is actually initialized before this, vari this parameter is set. You can't actually do this. In other words, if you do it, it will get a value that, that's not appropriate. Um, the, the parameter value is not yet available. Um, uh, so uh, the type and initial value of, of this was int and minus one. And for this, it's, I'd like to say age initial, but this is bad. This is problematic because this quantity doesn't yet exist. This, this is not yet. When this comes to be initialized, this is not yet the case. Okay, um, it, it isn't yet set to its value. This is a factoid, at least that's the way it was in any logic 10 years ago. And I don't think it's been fixed. Does anyone know for a fact it's been fixed? Okay, so what am I going to do? By the way, why am I just not using this? It's because I wanna change it. I wanna be able to change age over time and do not change a parameter. I would not recommend changing a parameter. It's bad form. In my view, it's bad. There are other models who disagree with me, but I, I tell you, I think it's bad. It, it again flies in the face of this idea that I articulated in the, in the Java tutorial that you, know, you, you don't casually interchange queries, things that you use to get values from, to give you values from, you know, things that you, you modify over time. So I think we want a very a variable is the type of thing we change over time. A parameter is something we, we use its value given. To. This is my flaw. And I've been very successful in applying that philosophy. Um, so really what you want to do is assign to this variable once this agent is created fully, its age initial is there. So the way I like to do it, you can do it one of two ways. You could assign, create an event which goes off at time zero, or it goes off whenever this agent is created, not necessarily time zero, or you put it at the very beginning of a state chart. When they come into existence, at the very beginning, you assign age to be equal to age in this. Okay. Incidentally, all this hullabaloo or all this futzing is one of the reasons I don't like this. But it will work. And now what has to happen? So we now we have them assigned to their, eight, their initial age. Now what has to happen? Every year, what has to happen? They have a what? A birthday. So how do we make something happen every year? You have basically two easy choices. What's one way to make it happen every year? An event. An event, we could put an event in a person. And we could say birthday, birthday event, right? And how often will it, it's a timeout. Does it occur once or many times? Many times, it's cyclic. It goes off, um, okay. Um, okay, this, this is actually interesting. Um, this is, uh, it's going to be uh, a recurrence time of how often? One year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, okay. Mm. Um, okay, this is, this, is, this is interesting. It's a recurrence time of one year. Um, yes, uh, Bjorn. Well, it, it's true that any logic does represent the calendar, and you can reason about the calendar, but this is logical time. And this is 
time in years is a logical time. It's not getting into the vagaries. Is it called 2000 or called 2001 or is it called February? So um, we're, not as, we're not actually assigning to a calendar date within the year like February 29th or whatever. We're, we're, just, we're just instead um, setting it to go off every year. Whatever date that falls on, so, so it actually tends not to come. There is actually a calendar. You can actually, ask what date is it, and and you can do that. You notice, you notice, there's actually a current date, right? And so you, you can set that if if you want to. You could say use calendar date. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Um, yeah, this this is interesting. Um, now. There's, a, there's another thing here. You notice it says it goes off first occurrence is an absolute time. This isn't quite what we want. What we'd like is for it to go off relative to the time the agent came into existence. Because maybe this is an agent born later. We're going to have born, be born soon. Okay. So this is kind of. It's, it's a nice idea to use an event. Um, I think it would actually work. What would we do for the event, for the action? We would increase the age by one, right? Okay, so we could say age equals age plus one. Now those who, who are veterans of the Java tutorial will know there's another way we could say that. What is it? Age plus plus. Or we could say age plus equal. This would be another way to say it. But I'll put it in there for, for ease. So we could actually do this. And um, you know, again, I'm I'm ad libbing here. But um, by the way, I, I just built in. It didn't say anything, and that gives me the willies here. Um, because I'm I'm building, and it didn't say it was a happy campground. So not. I, I, I'm tempted to leave any logic and come back in. So here we have a birthday event. It goes off yearly. And, and each time it goes off, it increments the age. When this person comes into existence, their age is set to the value of this parameter. Um, no fuss, no muss. And we don't actually need this. And I'll set this to max. So we would recognize a, a defined value. Or I could set it to minus 10. I'm going to set it to minus 10, some other way. Yeah. OK. Um, uh, so I think this would work OK. Um, I, I don't like that this is an absolute time. Wait, any, any comments on that, actually? Yeah. Right, right. I was thinking about that, just to get it sort of uh, the right um, Feature, um, I, I, I am kind of interested uh, just to confirm. This is how I've seen some models do it, as I recall. Um, so I'm going to run it, um, and we're going to see see this. See people if they all age successfully. Great. So time is going on, and and it's going very slowly. I'm going to speed up time, and time rushes on. Um, and time waits for no person, okay? And here we're gonna go, and we're gonna go in, and we're gonna take a look at people. It's year four, so they should have aged out of their initial age. Here's someone, oh, we didn't assign their age yet, yes. But what does it say their, their current age is four, okay? So it's obviously incrementing it just fine on a yearly basis. But let's go assign, assign an initial age. How, where do we assign their initial age? Where do we assign the values of parameters? Yeah, in Maine. And where in Maine? In the population. Yeah, you got it. Okay, here we go. The population, and we could, and so age initial here will be drawn from a distribution. And if I had time here, I would go create a custom distribution that showed people. I'm, I'm tempted to do that. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. I'm going to just go do it. Um, fine. I'm going to go to event and put in custom distribution, and I'm going to put age distribution. And 
I'm going to say it's continuous, uh, actually um, it's, it's discrete um, and um, uh, it's gonna probably turn, it's gonna draw it as double. Um, uh, so I would have to cast it to an end, which is kind of ugly. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna forsake this because this isn't my main emphasis of how to do it. Instead of doing it that way, I will just draw it with a uniform, uniform, it's called uniform discrete distribution between zero and 65 or zero and 80, fine. So here, each person in the population will have their initial smoking state from this and their age from this. I could have done it with a custom distribution. It would have just required a little bit more fuss um, because it would have drawn a double precision value and I'd have to turn it into an int and, and I'd have to kind of describe that. I, this is not my main method of doing it, but this does work. Um, so here we go. And, and here we have people evolving and I will speed it up and uh, run it for a couple of years. Come on, um, fine, 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 fine. There we go. And let's go look at people. And what we see is this is a person with, whose age initial was 33 and they are now 39 years old, which kind of makes sense um, uh, because it's, it, it, they were, ah, okay. Actually, there's one final thing, which is, um, okay, um, I think they got incremented very quickly after they arrived too. Um, so, okay, so a variant of this uh, would basically work uh, easily. Um, uh, this birthday event, I suspect is going off at time one year. So uh, probably I should make it start at one, one year basically. Um, uh, the first occurrence time will be one year after it's created. I suspect, Wade, what is going on is it's relative to its time of creation of the surrounding agent, but it does say absolute, so it kind of makes me wonder. Um, any thoughts on that, Wade? That's true. All these agents exist, yeah. For, for a, a, a dynamically created example. Okay, so this is someone with age 33, who's age 33, let's run it out. So they're age 33, they're still 33 all through the year. It's, it's rising and here we go. Um, and they're gonna turn age, age 34 now. And then at time two, they're gonna turn to age 35. There we go, boom, there we go, okay. Okay, so we're not incrementing it when it first starts. We're setting their first birthday event, which will increment their age at year one. Okay, um, right now, you're, all the agents are there initially. They will be created shortly. Okay, this is one way to do age. I don't like this way, but I wanted you to know about it. Um, uh, I prefer another way, which I'll show for most, most cases. Um, uh, there's actually two other implementations, but I'll, I'll provide it um, uh, as, as an example way to, to proceed. There we go. And I agree with Wade that we have to double check that it, it works with, um, with, with uh, dynamically created. So here we go. This is vector use version one. Okay. So now let's, let's do it a bit more artfully. I'm gonna get rid of this event. And I'm instead going to have a aging state chart. There we go. So I'm going to have a state chart entry point and I'm going to call it aging state chart. And its job in life is going to be to so aging state chart. There we go. Um, it's gonna be version two. Boom. Okay. So first of all, we're going to take what we did over here to assign this thing, and we're going to put it over here. 
Great. Yeah. And then we're going to have one state. And this state will just be living. Living. Um, fine. And then I'm going to have a transition which will which will leave and come back in. And guess how often this transition will fire? Once a year. This is going to be the birthday transition. Birthday. And birthday transition. Yep. And I'll show the name. And it'll be a timeout every one year. And guess what this will do when it fires? It will age, age plus plus or age equals age plus. Great. So they come in here, and then every year, um, uh, after a timeout of one year, they, they go here. So after one year after coming in, they'll go here, and then having entered in again, they'll go here after another year. Or so. We okay with that? By the way, this is one that could have been internal, too. It really didn't matter. So, so this is actually more robust. Because all these timings are relative to their time of creation. Yes, Larissa. I wouldn't say it's poor practice. I would say it's kind of a little bit inefficient because we could do it in the model as a whole. But um, I, I don't see it as, as poor practice. No. Um, in fact, it's quite common to have, have events going on for alternation like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll show that. Thanks. Thanks for the talk. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going down to population. And you know, here's a person who was age 33 and age 36. Okay, so we got a couple of questions there. Um, we do have events going off periodically within agents. This is another one, and it's it's quite common. Um uh one uh okay, so so I'll I'll, I'll answer Vyam's question. Yeah, when you have things that you don't want, um, a, a common pattern is you, like let's suppose we had an event here that we, we put some thought into once, but it's not ready for prime time. We don't, we don't want it. You can do this ignore thing and it will basically ignore it. And, and it will not pay attention to it. But there, it turns out it's there. And in other words, it, like it's in the model, so you can kind of see it. Um, and uh, I think there there may be some case where, yeah, I mean, if there's other things to refer to this, they'll have problems. But yes, you can just ignore things and hide them. Okay? And uh, that can be useful. Hmm. Um, okay, rather than deleting. Um, okay, so this is a preferred way compared to that event way. The event way is a little bit on the edge. I, I don't um, I, I don't like it, and I'm going to post this model. This is much preferred. Okay, um, uh, the event way probably work, but um, it really we want to see with with dynamically created. Okay, here's version eleven. This is recommended. Okay. I'm, in fact, I'm going to delete version nine just because I don't like it. I showed it to you, but because it's absolute time, the event goes off in absolute time. I'm concerned if this is an agent created later. This will be robust to it. Whenever the agent is created and they come into here, they, you know, they, they assign the initial age. That's when they're created, and and then every one year, relative time, it will be going. Okay, are we okay with that? So this is a clean model of how to do that, but it's still often not my preferred way to do it. Now, Larisa asked a question, is it, you know, is this undesirable basically? And, and the truth is having these agents individually incrementing in this way, given that they're all doing it yearly, they're all incrementing yearly, I'll buy it at different times relative to their creation. We're going to have agents created. 
it's tempting to just have one event in Maine that is like everyone's birthday. We treat everyone's birthday as being the start of the year. We just increment and we increment. And you know, that doesn't capture the fact that people are born at different times, but um, it may be adequate for your needs. So, you know, and unless this is like the big issue, it's gonna save you a lot of time because there's fewer events, particularly if you have a big population. But I wanna show you a method that doesn't require, it doesn't require, ladies and gentlemen, um, incrementing anything. It doesn't require the, the, the action of needing every year to make the donuts and, and increment things. Okay. Let's go see how that's done. Okay. That'll be my version 12. And um, it, it can be advantageous in some circumstances. So, what am I going to do here? None of this. Um, we don't worry about this. And in fact, we're not going to pass down age initial. No initial age passed to them. What we're going to pass down is something else by which we can always calculate their age. Suppose you forgot your age. How could you figure out how old you are? Yeah, the year you were subtracting you're born from the current time, right? And that's exactly what we do. So instead of passing in an initial age, we'll pass in a birthday or birth time, a time of birth. Are we okay with that? Okay, so we're gonna pass in a birth time. There we go, birth time. Are we okay? Okay, so, so if we pass in a birth time like that, um, we're going to, that's going to be a double, and I'm going to assign it to some bad value. And by the way, there's some nicer ways to say like bad value than minus one. I'm, I'm being kind of lazy. There's actually a thing called double here, and, and double. Um, you can ask for like, make this the minimum possible value, make it not a number and things like that. Um, so if you're looking for a more robust flag that this is invalid, you can do better than minus one. I'm going to be a, a little bit sloppy with that um, uh, because I, I do want to be able to see it easily. Okay. Okay. Um, and not a number would, would kind of be my preferred thing because I'm doing this live. I I just want to be cautious about being I'm doing off the top of my head. I want to be cautious about doing too much. Okay. So I'm setting birth time to minus one. Okay. Now what we're going to do is instead of having an age variable, we're going to have an age, something that calculates the age whenever asked. And guess what that thing will be? A function. We're going to have a function. And it's going to be called current age. Where did I drag this from? I dragged it from the agent palette over here. It's called current age. And it returns a value. Its job in life is to return a value. Not to do something, not to undertake an action, not to perform something, but instead to return a value. And last night, I again emphasized that. Really, when you're dealing with functions, they should do one thing. They should either calculate something and have no change, not change anything, not perform any action that changes something, not perform any side effect, as you say, or they should return a value. Oh, sorry, they should either return a value or they purely undertake an action and not. That's, that's often the idea query versus a command. Okay, so. Current age, guess what it's going to do? Guess how it's going to compute their age? You ask them for their age, how would you do it? Said it earlier, Michael. You. Exactly. The current time minus the birth time. 
that's what it is. And now I'm gonna I'm gonna put these in parentheses just so it's visually clear. You're not returning time, you're returning this thing. Time returns the current time. Are we okay with this? Okay. So anytime we want, we can ask someone for their age, but they don't have to calculate their age. They don't have to, you know, to, to go and increment every year. They don't have to worry about that. It's just when asked, they'll tell you what their age is. Does that make sense? Okay. So we can we can do that readily. And maybe to illustrate this, I'm gonna make this. Oh, yeah. Um, um, right now, this thing is incrementing by their connections. Remember, we did that. How do we make this by their age? How do we make it grow with age? Can we do that? Just so we see something that changes by age? Because we can't go in and look at their age and because they have to call the function. So can we call it? Okay, so let's make it 1.0 plus, make it five plus five times age. Okay, now this is gonna get really big, five times age. Some of these are gonna be really big. Oh, sorry, sorry, not, not age. What do I have to do to get their current age? Call the function, current age. There we go, just like that, oops. Like that. Let me put it up on the big screen for those at the back. There we go. Are we okay? So build early, build often. Again, I'm doing this. I, I, I don't like the fact it's not saying build complete successfully. So I'm going to leave any logic and I'm going to come in, um, come back in. So sorry, I, I just, it gives me the willies and I can't see if there's a, an error message. And in general, I worry maybe something is, is wrong or something like that. So I'm gonna leave and I'm gonna, um, I don't know why it stopped doing that or exactly when. Okay, okay any question on this, what I'm doing? So we're passing in a birth time. When I, whenever I want to find out my age, all I do is find out the current time and I subtract the birth time. Because time is measured in years, it all works out. The time we're measured in months, I'd have to, because those are times in months, I'd have to take that difference and divide by 12 to get age in years. Okay, let's, let's do this. Okay, so. I'm going down to this again, and I'm going to build it. And it is going to be a happy camper. It says build completed successfully. Happy, happy. Okay, so I'm going to run it. There we go. And okay. Running very slowly because I, I set the time. Look at that. What's going on? <laughs> Everyone's getting older. Where are the youngins? They're all the same age because they all got created at the initial time. There's no demographic turnover here. Or there's no, sorry, there's no new population. So let's fix that. Let's add immigration. Can we do that? Okay. So I'll put this. So it, you know, it's it's working as far as it concerned, we saw them aging, but they were all gray. <laughs> Not surprisingly. So. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. I'll go provide this model to you. And uh, let's go on to, to the next uh, challenge, which is adding in demographic change, demographic change. So I'm going to add this. And there we go. Okay. Great. That's posted version 12. We okay with this? Okay. So we're going to add in demographic change. Okay. Um, great.
So um, what we're going to do now is represent births in the population, okay? Uh, and I wanna ask you, how, how are we going to, how are we going to represent um, births within a population? What, what's some idea of, of how to represent this? Hmm? Yeah, um, okay. Um, we could do it with an event on Maine, but that event will have to go off more frequently if there's a big population, right? So it may be easier to represent at an agent level because it's agents that, that drive, existing agents that drive births. There may be a birth rate, okay? Um, okay, so what I'd like to do is to um, go and, we, we could do it at the, at the, at the um, overall level, just again, we'd have to do it with a frequency dictated by, um, um, by, by births, but let's, let's do it at an individual level. So uh, we're going to have, in Maine, we're gonna have a birth rate. And this is a pattern we're gonna come back to many times. Um, uh, we'll often have things that need to go on at the individual level, but we have a, we have a parameter that gives the assumption across all agents that lives in Maine. That parameter lives in Maine. And here it's going to be called the birth rate, okay? Um, and, and that's in distinction to a fertility rate, which would be for women only. We would have a birth rate. So we're dragging in the parameter and we'll have a birth rate, okay? A birth rate, fine. And the birth rate, you know, we could set it to minus one so we know if we've missed it, but basically if there's a parameter in Maine, who's gonna set that parameter? Who's gonna determine the value of the parameter? Anyone? It's the, if you have a parameter in person, who sets that? What, what sets the value of a parameter in person? Well, it's where the person is created, which you know, is to this point, you've seen it in population. If you have a parameter in Maine, what, what is it that sets that parameter? Well, it's where it's created. What creates Maine? Yes, and what initializes the model? A experiment or scenario. That's what's running the model. In fact, yesterday we saw calibration scenarios or parameter variation scenarios that create the model many, many times. This is a, um, this is a situation if we have uh, those type of experiments that's created many times. The simplest type of, of, of uh, scenario just creates it once. Okay, so we added a birth rate here as a parameter in the model. And the value of that birth rate is set by the parameter. So if we have simulation parameter here, we, we would need to set a birth rate, 0 0.02 or something, 2% birth rate. Um, you know, and, and every, every scenario would, would set a birth rate. You notice that I set it as minus one here. Um, when, when I have a parameter in a person, and I know that that's got to be set by, um, by the population, often I make it an illegal value because I want to require people to give me a value. And it, it may be quite different. But for for parameters in Maine, very commonly, I have a default value in mind. That's kind of the status quo value, the business as usual value, the value that's assumed absent any other, um, absent to any other uh, need. So I'm gonna set it to 0.02 as its default value. That would be the value 
unless we go and change it in another scenario, this is its kind of reference value. And you typically want a reference scenario, commonly called the baseline scenario, which, which is the point of reference when you run scenarios. You run that baseline scenario, and then you run alternative scenarios, what if scenarios, but they're, they're basically compared to the baseline in their outcome. And really for parameters in main, you're generally gonna set their default value to be the baseline value. So unless the scenario overrides that, that's the value that will be assumed. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm setting that to 0.02. And you'll notice, and I actually went over this at one point, that because this didn't change that value, this is not bold. Remember at one point I showed, like if I had changed this to 0.03, now it's gonna make it bold because it departed from the baseline, okay? So in general, this is going to be a baseline set. So I'm gonna really call this experiment baseline. Check mark, this is another thing I want to cover. Baseline scenarios are standard to have. You have one distinguished baseline. Now there are, there are cases where you have a baseline for this and a baseline for that and a baseline for that. And generally, it's much cleaner if you have one basin. So I, I, it's not that I never do the other thing. It's just, it's, it's more complicated to think about. This is the single distinguished baseline scenario. And what that means basically is that all, this, all the parameters have their reference. Value. Okay, it's the reference. Value. It's, it's often not terribly privileged, but sometimes it is the status quo or business as usual, kind of, you know, standard operating procedure scenario. Okay, so, so we have a birth rate. Now, what has to happen according to that birth rate? What has to happen dictated by the birth rate? Guess what? Births need to occur. And where do those births occur? Well, it's, we could do it in Maine again, but we, again, we'd have to do it with a frequency dictated by the total people in the population. It's more elegant to do it in person, okay? so. I'm gonna create a state chart called fertility state chart or birth state chart, um, you know, uh, or life event state chart, okay? Um, I, I will call it fertility state chart. Maybe that's over, over selling it. Fertility state chart. And um, no, it's not crazy because we could have, you know, We, we could distinguish people of different age. For now, I'm just going to say, you know, fertile or something like that. Um, we could have, we could have a, you know, pre, um, pre reproductive year. And then at puberty, they go to a reproductive state chart and so on, in which case it would be birth rate for among reproductive age individuals. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say this, and then there's going to be an event here, which is going to go from this back to it, that's gonna represent what, anyone? Giving birth, there we go, there we go. There we go. So this is giving birth. And how often is this going to occur? Birth rate, exactly, exactly, precisely. So Maine, oh, so where does the birth rate live? Maine, so you have to say Maine.birth rate. Trying to tick off things I, I really wanna emphasize. Maine.birth rate, it's referring to a parameter that lives in Maine. Otherwise, we'll say, ah, fine. By the way, very common pattern. Birth rate affects person-level behavior, but because it has a common value across all persons, all agents, it lives in Maine, and the agents refer to it in Maine. But it's affecting the agent behavior. Um, okay, 
Um, trying to make sure I um, monitor the chat here. Okay. Okay, and this should be called giving birth. I mean, it is called that, and I'm going to show the name. Okay, um, there we go. Okay, so lots of goodness, but we're missing the key thing. What's the key happy moment? What's the key joyous thing that has to happen? Yeah, the birth has to occur. Okay, um, ready? Okay. There has to be an action here, and we have to add a baby to the population. How are we going to do that? Where, so notice my words. We have to add a baby to the population. Where does that, where is the population? Anyone? It's in Maine. So we have to say, Maine dot, add under bar population. And notice it has two varieties. One doesn't take anything as its information. It doesn't need any information to do its job. Do not do that. You'll see why in just a moment. The other one requires information to do its job. What is the information it needs to do its job? Okay, well, it actually tells you what it is. It's a good, good idea, but it actually turns out not to need that. It knows what that is. It turns out it's intelligent enough to, to know what that is. But the parameter is the initial smoking state and the birth time. Where, why, why would it need that information to create a baby, create a baby person? Why would it need that information in particular? Okay, yes, but remember what in population, what information do you need to set up each person in the population? Set up each person in that population main. When we when we define the population, what do we have to specify? The value of what for each person? Yeah, the, the value of the yeah, it was, it, was, it was initial age originally, but in general, it was the parameters. Age was one of them. Remember that? Remember that? That's right. It was age was one of them, but it was because it was a parameter. Remember, parameters and code assumptions, in this case, it's an assumption within person, but it also communicates the value of the assumption from the point of creation of that agent, which in this case, Used to be just the the population. That's where that's what created person. So there we have to specify for every person the value of their parameters, their birth time, and their initial smoking state. But now we're we, we're also giving birth here, so we're creating a new agent. So we have to specify the value of their parameters. Parameters. We have to tell them the information they need to be a full full on human being. So we have to tell them their initial smoking state. Guess what that's going to be? <laughs> one, one hopes. Um, never, one, one hopes. Initial never smoker. Remember it's the initial state. Remember that was the option created a long time ago. And guess what the birth time is? This is a particularly easy one. Guess what the birth time is? It's right. Now, it's right now. And how do we say right now in the model? Give me right now and the value of right in the time right now. If we say T-I-M-E begin for N, M for N because it doesn't need anything to do its job. Let me, let me put that up there on the big screen and let me build it and make sure it's happy camper. It is how, oh, it's, it's oh my gosh. Okay, so let's, there it is. Okay, so why Maine? Why do we have Maine at the beginning? That's where population is. That's, that's where the population that needs to be added this 
lives, right? Um, oh, 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 yeah. um, okay. Um, um, what's this add under bar population? It's telling population to add me to it, it turns out. It, any logic creates a function by that name. If you have a population called pop, it would be add under bar pop. For, for a population called population, we'll call population. It's just any logic sort of name for it. I don't know if you remember, but before we had death in this model, and we actually had something very similar right here. It had remove population. So this is the same general type of thing. And then what is this thing? That's the value of there of what? Yeah, the initial smoking state parameter. And the, the other one is the value of the birth time. And you have to provide them in that order. It's finicky. Why is it finicky? Because it, we created the parameters in that order. And if you give look at the choice, and I'll put that back, but I'm just showing you, it tells you what order to tell them in, to send them. This one, initial smoking state, and then birth time says, give me that. I need that to do my job, to, to undertake the birth. Or births only so easy. Well, okay. Um, so we've given this. Now, there's one thing we still have to fix up. We added this birth time, but I don't think we ever put in the logic for it in population. We should have. We should have, before doing this, we should have tested that out, but I lapsed, and I, I stand ashamed. So wh where, do, where does the population live? It lives where? Maine, indeed, Maine. Okay, let's go down Maine, and, and there's birth time, and, and birth time for this, we have to give a value for you. If someone were one year ago, Okay, we want to create a population that initially is of different ages, right? That was part of the problem. They were all born, they were all the same age. Remember that? So now we have to give them different ages. Okay. So suppose we wanted to draw them uniformly between zero and 80 years old. What would we put here? Okay, so let me ask this. If someone were right now, so this is, this is creating this population at time zero. You should know this. This population is created at time zero, okay? The model starts at time zero. If we want a one-year-old in the population, that one-year-old at time zero, when were they born? For them to be one at time zero, when the model starts, it's time zero. If they're one-year-old now, when were they born? Time minus one. If they're five year old now, when were they born? Time minus five. If they're a, a centenarian and they're a hundred years old now, when were they born? Time minus a hundred years. Okay? That's all it is. So, so all we have to do is do minus uniform from 0, 0.0 to 80.0. So we want to draw them from that. Now, I, of course, I could do the custom distribution with age, and that would be beautiful to do now. And it's so tempting. And oh boy, can I resist it? It's, it, it would require less than five minutes. Do you want me to do it or not? You want, okay, you want me to do it? I'll, I'll do it. Um, I'll, I'll be happy to do it. You want me to do it? I'll, I'll do it. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, here's your custom, here's the custom distribution. And this will be called initial age distribution, right? I'm being, I'm being specific. It's the initial age. After that, it's endogenously general, right? Initial age. This is continuous because we have double values. Um, and I can either give the values for ranges. I could give a frequency table. Um, so the frequency of, of, of different ones, or I can give observe samples, I could sample them from a set. I'm gonna say ranges, okay? So I'm gonna say from zero to, um, to uh, 
I don't know, I'll say um, from zero to 20, there's, by the way, this is gonna be a probability distribution. So it's, it's just gonna normalize it. In other words, the, the, the exact, these don't have to add up to one, it will turn it into adding up. to one. So I'll say there's, there's 20 from zero to, uh, okay, the 20 and then, and then from 20 to, to 40, there's, um, I don't know, 17. And, and from, um, this is just sort of relative values. And from, um, you could actually put population quantity, right? You, you could put in actual numbers of people in those age um, categories if you want to. 40 to 60, there's 15, uh, relatively speaking. And then from 60 to 80, there are um, 10 or something like that. And I could go preview it and I'd see something like that. Okay. So it's going to draw from this. Now you could give me actual numbers and we do exactly that. You know, you could do it by particular age, zero, one, two, three. That, that's a distribution. And we could also draw it from samples if you wanted to do so. Um, okay. So let's, let's go for the population. All we do now, instead of doing uniform, what do we do? Yeah, initial age distribution, call it, and, and there it is. It's the second one. That's all we do. We call it, and it returns its value. Five minutes was enough. OK, great. Let's run this thing. Let's run this thing. Let's, first of all, build. Build completed successfully. Who needs TA help? Who needs TA help? TAs are activated. TAs prepare for deployment. Okay. Mobilization is underway. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay. TAs meet at the muster point. TAs form the phalanx. Okay. Um, oh my. Okay, we, we have a rather exuberant depiction. Who are these? Who's big red here? Yeah, and they're what smoking status? They were, yeah, now they're maybe they died. Um, but they either changed or they died and, and revealed someone behind it, right? Um, okay, so I could. I could run it and watch this. Oh. <laughs> well, it is. Oh. What? It it is it is rather high. Um. Okay. So. Um. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it. Um, but yeah, the 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 size of people is um, generous. So let's let's go to person. Where did we control the size of them? Where do we put its dependence on age? Anyone remember? The oval. Yeah. So let's make it instead of five plus five times current age. Let's make it five times log of current age plus one. Plus 1.0, because if their current age is zero, I don't want it to blow up. Okay, so five plus five times log of current age plus one. I'm gonna put it up on the big screen. Um, I don't want it to blow up if the current age is zero. Log of zero would cause it displeasure. And so I'm going to, um, I'm going to um, uh, have it be the log of zero. And then it will grow, but it won't grow you know, if you double the age, we'll double. So well less than double. Are we okay with this? Okay, let's 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 run that. Um, so I'm going to run it, and um, here we go. Uh, okay, so where is the window? Did it not come up here? Hello. Did it? Is it still coming up or? Thought I uh, thought I started it. In fact, it it looks like it did start it, but no, no, no. Okay, so let's try that again. 
There we go. Okay. And okay, that's good. Um, so where is this window running? Anyone see this? Um, okay. Okay. Um, let us minimize a bunch of windows. So, huh? Did it come up from the other window? Like the other screen? Um, okay, something, something closed a bunch of my windows in the other screen and popped up another window. This was like two minutes ago. And I'm wondering if this had something to do with it. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if one of the tech staff might be engaged in this, but it, it does say it's running and everything. Um, okay, so what's going on here? This is quite fascinating. Um, okay, am I running the correct thing? Uh, yes, obviously it, it is. Okay, um, I'm just gonna close this and, and, and come back in. I'm, I'm sorry, I just I wanna, wanna cut through whatever's causing this and I'm gonna go back into any logic. Never, I don't recall ever seeing that before, but um, again, there's a window that popped up for an audio drive. And I'm wondering if it was something the tech staff installed yesterday or the day before when they did their processing. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Something is going on in, on this computer. I'm actually not seeing this. Yeah, this is what I'm kind of doing here. Um, I actually don't this I don't actually see it running. Um, yeah, there's again, there's something funky happening because all my windows that I had over here, which had the boot camp schedule and so on, all disappeared as well. Um, I'm wondering if the PAs or, or sorry, the, the tech staff are doing something on this computer right now, trying to install, because again, I, like something for the audio driver popped up too. Um, this is really strange. Okay, um, so you were saying these Chromium processes here? Yeah, so so let's, let's go end them, okay. Um, really, Strange. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say open again. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. All my windows disappeared. Okay, happy, happy, you know, okay. Work better this time. Um, okay, good, 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 good. And let's go run it, run it again. There we go, okay, yeah. My Chromium is all, Chrome all died and then the Chrome said something to do with it, okay. So here we have, so the older ones, you know, are shown larger. You have younger ones being born. It is a rather high death rate and it outpaces the deaths from, from uh, smoking by far and everyone else is immune, it, it doesn't die. So, so you know, the, the, the population grows um, effusively. And right now it's, uh, a population uh, that's 14,000. And it was originally. Okay. So um, we have an open population. Um, we'd want to add in deaths from other causes, right? Um, uh, actually, this is something we can do. Let's, let's do that. Suppose we wanted to represent competing risks. 
So people with healthy hearts also die just at lower rates, right? This is a rate of 0.06 per year. Let's suppose we wanted these folks to die. How would we do that? Anyone? So we want people with healthy hearts to also die at a much lower rate. How do we do that? Yeah, we could actually just do it. It turns out it's a good idea, but we could actually just draw it to that state. Um, there's there's no problem just, you know, sorry, to that final state. So here we go, and here we go, and we'll double click on this and pull it like that. And this guy removes from the population, and here we go. So this would be um, death from other causes something like that, and it'll be a timeout with a rate of, let's say, 0 0.015 you know, or something like that per year, uh, a hazard rate. And that transitions them down here, and this removes them from the population. How did I do that? I dragged in this transition from healthy heart to this final state. I set it to be a rate of 0 0.015 per year. It's a rate transition. And now I'm going to run it. Okay. Um, okay. Um, if someone who's present online um, could just verify you're still hearing me and everything, I'd appreciate it. Because uh, on my Windows over on that computer working is running. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all those windows were closed suddenly. Um, okay, so I'm going to run it here and there we go. And now you start seeing the effects of generational turnover. And it's the dream of the American Legacy Foundation or now the, the uh, Truth Foundation, Truth Initiative, um, to eliminate tobacco-related disease and harms in, in tobacco use. That is a population that's turning over. It's you know about 400, 500. It's still creeping up. Um, and you know we could here, here's the population size of heart disease and current smokers, quite small. There is competing risk going on. People with healthy hearts have a certain chance of developing heart disease, even absent being a current smoker, but they also have a chance of dying. Some develop heart disease before dying. Some, develop, some die before developing heart disease. And um, uh, you know the, the resulting dynamics of the population are are evident here, and now it's reached 50,000. Okay, um, so I'll save this away and distribute it, but we just hit a bunch of needs here. And unfortunately, my Windows died, so I'm gonna have to, have to call up my Chrome again. Uh, so I will get this posted, okay. Um, so here we go. And maybe we'll take a five minute uh, break right now, if we could. If that's okay. Or, or say, say 10 minute break. And then we'll continue on. Great. Thank you, folks online as well for the, uh, for the feedback. No, no, it's, it's still, oh, it's still showing over that over there. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. could, could we ask it um, when we resume? Yeah. Okay. That'll be uh, that'll be good. I'm gonna go post uh, this.
So that's now posted for anyone waiting for it. And I'll stop sharing and stop recording.